Coming up, build a wind-powered bird scarer and win the Battle of the Backyard. Find out which colour shades are easiest on the eyes. How to handle a flat tyre with an emergency bike pump. And are you feeding an army of microscopic dust mites? Ooh, they look disgusting. I'm sure I'm not feeding any dust mites. Oh, I think you may have a bit of a surprise coming, Dana. But first, Zach has a problem with pests of another kind, hungry birds. Lara and I are planting some tomatoes into the veggie patch. Dig a little hole, loosen up the seedling in the pot, and carefully place it in the ground. There, that'll give us lots of tasty tomatoes. As long as those pesky birds don't eat them all. Those birds sure are cheeky. There you go, little plant. Time for you to turn out the tomatoes. Oh no! Birds everywhere! They're just waiting to steal my tomatoes. Right, take off you thieving pirates. Hey, the wind is blowing, I'm just washing around. And the birds don't like the movement at all. That's given me an idea. Why don't we build a wind-powered bird scarer? Good idea, Zaki boy. We're off to Carrie Ann's house to get ready for a party. Whoa, that sun is bright. And it's a long walk down to the beach. This white sand is so glary. Time to make some emergency sunglasses. I'll make goggles out of this egg carton. Carrie Ann is cutting out some coloured lenses from that cellophane wrapping paper. Groovy green, man. Those will be cool. Here's a frame for one pair. I'll cut out the eye holes. Hey, mellow yellow. We just press our lenses into the frames, add a little string to keep them in place, and we are good to go. Moon goggle party glasses. Let's see how they cope with the glare on the sand. Bright sunlight is blinding through these yellow lenses. Let's do a swap. On with the groovy green goggles. Hey, with the green lenses, the beast looks much less bright. The sun's white light is actually made up of a whole spectrum of coloured lights mixed together. Our eyes find green lenses the most comfortable on bright days because green blocks out more of the light spectrum colours that we find hard on our eyes. On a dull day, yellow lenses can improve visibility because they're good at blocking blue light out of the spectrum. Blue light is particularly reflective and scatters as it bounces off objects, causing glare. Well, our party glasses are ready. Wish we could say the same for our party lunch. Hey, these glasses are groovy. I think they're going to become the fashion. We may be waiting a long time for those to come into fashion. Better go see how Zach's windmill's coming along while we wait. I'm building a bird scaring windmill to protect my mini farm. The first step is to make the part that turns in the wind. We'll need to cut this balsa wood into strips the same size. Mark eight pieces the length of a ruler and cut them off. There, eight fan blades. Next, we cut out a big cardboard circle, like this. Divide it into eight even slices of pie for the ruler. And make a cut where each line reaches the edge of the circle. Now put the eight blades into the cuts. Bend them at an angle and hold them in place with tape. Check it out. See how all the blades are at the same angle? We made a hole in the middle to put a wooden rod through. That gets held in place by two little pieces of cork. We've made a bamboo tower to hold the blades. It looks like the Eiffel Tower. Well, sort of. What a spin! Hey, nice touch, Lara. A flag for the top. And our windmill is almost ready to go to work. Looks like Mum and Dad had lots of wine at their party last night. Someone threw all these corks in the pool. 
What a mess those silly adults made. We could make something with all these corks. Hey, Ashley, want to make cork boats and race them across the pool? Take a few corks and feed them onto a wooden skewer. Once you have three corks on the skewer, it's time to add a mast. We're using long sewing needles. Poke one into the front cork. Now, instead of wind power, we're making magnet power sails. Stick a paper clip onto the front of the sail, like this. Then attach it to the mast. There, one super sleek ocean racing yacht. One last thing to make. This is a powerful magnet. I'm using modelling clay to attach it to the end of a long wooden rod. One more and we're ready to race. Okay, Ashley, you're not allowed to touch the boat. Yeah, it's working. This is fun. Who needs wind when you have magnet Magno races? races? The force that is moving the boats is not coming from the magnets or the wind, but from the girls. Magnetic attraction draws the paperclip towards the rod. However, it's the moving of the rod that is really pulling the boats along. Well, we know our boats can race, but can they survive a wild storm at sea? I wouldn't like to be a sailor on board one of those boats in a storm. Oh, I think I'd be sick. Speaking of sick, something's making Nicole sick and sneezy. Achoo! Yuck! Zach makes so much mess. Achoo! It's dusty in here too. I don't know how he lives like this. I'm going to make an airborne dust collector and show Zach how filthy he is. I've cut out a tag shape from a sheet of card. Poke a hole in the top and stick some tape across the rectangular gap. You end up with a nice sticky surface like this. Attach a piece of string and the air junk detector is ready to hang out. Let's see how dirty the air is outside. I've made another one to stick near filthy old Zach. And let's test the air in the kitchen too. I left my dust collectors hanging for a whole day. Let's see what they can tell us. Outside here, we've definitely caught some dust particles. Looks like tiny specks of dirt. And inside Zach's dusty dungeon. Ugh, yuck! This dust collector is filthy. And it's not just specks of dirt on this one. Now let's check the kitchen. Not too bad. A bit of dust, but not as bad as next to Zach. At least the kitchen is clean. Even in a clean house, there are always dust particles floating in the air. Dust is mainly made up of disintegrated fabric fibres, plant pollen and tiny flakes of human skin. Wherever there is dust, microscopic dust mites can be found. They eat human skin flakes and also cause allergic reactions in many people. Well, I think I found the dustiest place in the house. Zach is definitely a dust mice dream. <laughs> Kimberly and I are looking for wildlife in the forest. We want to take some pictures of animals for a photographic exhibition. Here, wild animals. We won't hurt you. Uh-oh. There's something wrong with my bike. I think it's the front tyre. Yep, completely flat. And I forgot to bring the bike pump. But that's nothing an intrepid wildlife photographer can't handle. Hey, no pictures, please, Kim. This is serious. I'll cut a length out of this spare inner tube. This is going to make an emergency tyre pump. Have you got a spare film canister, Kimberly? Perfect. Hold the inner tube and I'll squish it into this end. Make sure the solid end is on the outside. Now you put another one in that end. That's good. Two film canisters with a rubber hose between them. If I make a hole in this end with scissors, it puffs air when you squeeze the rubber hose. Let's tape up the joints to make it stronger. Take a picture of this wild animal. The hose fitting screws into the bottom canister like this. And I'll make a hole in the side of the top canister. 
Now when I pump, air is drawn into the hole and blown out of the tube. Clever, huh? Now for the big test. A few pumps like this. And yes, it's inflating. Just like a real bicycle pump, Fraser's clever emergency pump works by compressing air inside and forcing it into the tyre. Air is drawn in at the hole in the canister. Fraser can stop the air from escaping and build up air pressure by covering the hole. When the air pressure is greater inside the pump than in the tyre, air will move into the tyre. Well, we didn't get around to photographing any wild animals. But who needs them when you can photograph a brilliant inventor? Quite right, Fraser. You know, this show is full of brilliant inventors. Zach's one of them too. He's invented a wind-powered bird scarer. My windmill is spinning like crazy in the wind. But those annoying tomato-eating birds aren't being scared away. Hey, good idea, Lara. They won't like the sound of those bells ringing. I'll attach them to the shaft of the windmill. Thank you. A bit of trusty tape. Now the wind spins the blades and that makes the bells ring. You're smarter than you look, Lara. Let's see how the birds are taking it. They are out of here. See ya, suckers. Gimme five. Nice work, bird busters. Zack's windmill is harnessing the power of the wind passing over it. The angle of the blades creates high air pressure in front and low air pressure behind the blades. The high air pressure pushes the blades into the low air pressure space and so keeps the windmill turning. As the blades spin, the dowel spins, which in turn rings the bells. Even hungry birds are naturally cautious about coming near moving noisy objects. With our windmill keeping the birds away from the veggie patch, Laura and I are free to ride on this wild windmill. Yeehaw! <laughs> Swinging around on the washing line, now that's my idea of fun in the garden. Well, we can go have a swing right now, because we've come to the end of another show. See, See you next time. time.